Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. This week, we are going to sew your autumn colored scraps. Do you have those? Grab your oranges, browns, beige, green, whatever you have, because you want to see what we're making this week. Aren't these adorable? I'm going to take you through finding the pattern to print and then I'm going to show you how I made these step by step. I do have an external link for the pattern as well as an external link for bias binding, but I don't want any of that to put you off. It's all easy, okay? So I'm not going to hang around long telling you about it because I know we want to get right to work and look, I made another set. They were too cute and I have, I think, three more sets ready to go. I love these things. And who doesn't have scraps? And they don't have to be autumn colored. They could be anything. So you're just going to need some scraps. I use three layers of cotton batting. Little piece of backing fabric. It doesn't even take much. You know, a little bit of time and this is what you're going to have. I'm excited. I can't wait for you guys to make these. They'll really dress up your kitchen or the kitchen of someone you love. If you haven't subscribed already to my channel, why don't you click below to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell. Make sure it's all filled in so that you get all the notifications and don't forget to like. Okay, let's go take a look, see what we need to do to make these and you're going to have your own set. All right, let's take a look at what we're going to need today. You are going to need some scraps sewn into strips that measure approximately nine inches square. And you can use varying widths like I did here. As you can see, some are very narrow, some are wider. Whatever you have on hand, the strips, just sew them together. So you want it approximately nine inches square. And I'm going to show you how to make your leaf template, but this is what it will look like. We're going to get to that in a minute. You'll need that. You need some bias binding. Straight cut binding will not work for this. You're going to have to go around a curve, which means you have to have that stretch. And if you've never done, or if you've never used bias binding, this is a great time to start. It's not difficult. I'll walk you through every step of using it. The only part I won't show you is how to make it. I will leave a link below. I'm going to leave a video link as well as a link to a blog. So depending on what type of learner you are, you can either see the pictures of how it's done or the video. But I will leave a link below. You're going to need, I made a nine, I used a 19 inch square which that will also be below. A 19 inch square to make my bias binding. And I have plenty because I've already made two of these. And I have all this left over to make more, like what we're going to make today. So you just want it to be in a color that goes along with your scraps. So you're going to need that. In these, I used three thicknesses of cotton batting. You could use Insel Bright and cotton batting or just Insel Bright. Uh, that's totally up to you. And of course, you'll need thread. Now, when I make pot holders, I tend to use cotton thread if I have it in the colors that I need. Is it crucial? I have been asked this before. And in my opinion, I have made pot holders with polyester thread since I have been making pot holders, which is eh, over 40 years now. Wow. <laughs> if I were making bowl cozies, I would say use cotton thread. Pot holders, you can use polyester thread. They're not going in the microwave. I've never had a problem with them. So anyway, that's what you'll need. Of course, your regular scissors, thread, sewing machine, that sort of stuff. And so next I'm going to show you how to make the leaf template and then we will get to our cutting after that. 
Okay, let's take a look at how to make our leaf template. Now, you print it out. I printed mine at 105% because I wanted it just slightly larger than what it was, okay? So first things first, you're going to trace around the outside of this. trying to mark it a little darker because I'm afraid the camera won't pick it up. And you might wonder why I don't keep the original shape. Because you could. You don't have to do what I'm doing here. This is simply how I like it. I like my leaf to be at least slightly symmetrical. And this one is not because I mean, I know that in nature, not everything is perfect, and that's what makes it beautiful. I do get that. But when I'm making something, I want it to look symmetrical. And this little swoop in here, to me, when I make these pot holders, I don't want that swoop. This is the shape I want. It still looks like a leaf. Okay, so I have this drawn out from this, from tracing it. Now I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to line up the top and the bottom. Because there is a little bit of a swoop there. And then I'm going to outline this until it meets right here. Whoops. I'm going to take my old scissors, which I've had forever and a day. I use them for everything. <laughs> they used to be sewing scissors, but they aren't anymore. Now, ideally, you would have two patterns in cardstock because that's what I'm, I just traced this onto. I printed this on paper and used cardstock for this. But it depends on how many of them you're going to make. If you don't have cardstock, don't worry. You can still do it on regular paper. All right. The next thing we're going to do is cut this in half. I'm actually not going to cut mine. I'm going to pretend because I've already cut mine. I already have a pattern of it. But what you want is a template that looks like this. Okay. So what I did was I, I cut this one in half. And then with my pointier tip up, because you'll notice this one is rounded and this is, is more pointed. I made these lines going up and this is basically a reminder okay I used my ruler to do it the first time Oops. I hope you guys can see them but I'll show you close up so I wrote that it was my template and that I printed it at 105%. And the reason I did this, I'll show you in a minute when we get to cutting out our fabrics. But you'll see why I did that. So you're going to need both of these. So don't throw this. We're going to use that coming up. But this is what we're going to need first in our next section. Okay? So let's go to the next part. Okay, let's get this show going. <laughs> All right, now, the best thing to have is a variety, and that's why I would say to have two of these, okay? I, I have more made up, but two gives you a variety because you don't want the same mirror image on these. You want each pot holder to be different. So... This is what we're going to do. You want to have at least two. More is better, but two will get you by. So remember these markings. You want to make sure that when you lay this out, that they're somewhat close. You just, you just want them for direction. They don't have to be perfect. You just know that you're going correctly. Now, 
The other thing is, is you want to leave some space because we're going to quilt these. So you want to leave a little bit of room there. The first thing that I do when I make these is I leave myself a quarter inch beyond this template, okay? That's my cutting line. In fact, I'm going to cut that right now. And I'm an inch out, or an inch, a quarter inch from that mark. Now, I'm a little close right here, but I've got a little bit more room, so Whoops, you just want to rough cut this. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to have a little bit of space to do your quilting because all the rest will be trimmed off. And if you have a big enough piece to keep for postcards or whatever you want to, you can use those too. Okay, so as I said, we wouldn't want the mirror image to be, whoops, see it has to go the other way. <laughs> That's where you have to flip your template because this one we had the pointy one going up. So we wouldn't want to do that again because then we'd have two of the same side. Do you see what I'm saying? But either way, we're going to go to another one to get our second side. So we're going to flip the template this time. Let's see which way I want to go with this. I always have to look because I get confused easily. Could you tell? <laughs> uh, let's see if this is going to look good or not. I've got a dark with a dark. I think I'm going to try a different piece. Hey, that's a good one. Okay. So again, I'm going to leave myself a little bit of space, but I also want to leave enough for the mirror in the second pot holder on the other side. So I'm going to use my ruler again for my quarter inch out from the template. And then I'll just rough cut close enough for me okay so you want to take a look at this and see how you want it and again we're going to be turning that okay in a moment so you're going to sew these two together make sure you have everything going the correct direction And we'll pin this. We'll take this to the sewing machine and using a one quarter inch seam allowance, we're going to sew along here. And I used a 1.8 millimeter stitch length. You want something fairly close. I don't like to see the stitches in the center, but you do whatever you think is right. We're going to sew that and I always press my seam open and then I'll meet you back here. All right, so now I'm making two at the same time, but we'll concentrate on one. So as I said, you're going to need, I used three layers of cotton batting and a lot of times I use two. It depends on the cotton batting. Um, and you could use Insel Bright with a layer of cotton batting. It's totally up to you. Maybe you have an old towel. Maybe you have some denim. You can use whatever you want. So I'm going to place my pieces onto my cotton. And then I have two pieces of backing. So I'm going to lay my backing wrong side up. Just make sure it's smooth. Lay your fabric on top, or your all your layers here. Now, you can pin if you want to, but these are kind of thick to pin through. I am going to use some spray basting 
or some basting spray, I guess I should say. So I always put down some newspaper because I spray this stuff everywhere and I never get it right. I always get it clumped in one area or something. It's probably the brand, but I got these for a dollar a can, so I'll use them. And they'll have to pry them from my cold dead hands because, oh yeah, I say that and then it goes on beautifully. Make sure it's stuck enough. Yeah, it is. Okay, and I'll do the other one. And I put my walking foot on for this. And I think I told you guys, but just in case I didn't, I will tell you again. I am using cotton thread for this because I actually have the cotton thread that matches with this for a change. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, you don't know how long ago it was, but Margins had a whole bunch of uh, cotton thread. Ten spools for a dollar. And I've never heard of it before. Rowan or Rowan? Mercerized cotton. So I picked up those, so always good to be able to use something. Okay, now I'm going to take these over to the machine and I'm going to quilt them. And I'll show you the first one. Now you, it, this is totally up to you how you do this. What I did is I went up and back and then I went between these. Now, you wouldn't need to go directly on your seams. You could just go wherever you wanna go. It's your pot holder, your leaf, do whatever you want. You could use decorative stitches. You could do whatever you choose. The first set I made, I used a leaf pattern going up through the center, but that was after everything else was quilted because, of course, had I done it first, it just would have uh, not been showing up very well. Anyway, we're going to take this over to the machine, and I'm going to let you see me quilt it. I think I'm going to cut some of this excess off right now because I don't need all that bulk in the way of the sewing machine. So I will meet you over there. All right, I'm ready to quilt this and I am using a 3.0 millimeter stitch length because anything any smaller doesn't show up at all. Uh, because I have three layers of cotton batting, uh, the stitches just kind of disappear even at, at the 3.0. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to speed this up. You guys will get to see what I do, how I do it. I do find that I have to work from the center outwards because if I come from the edge and go in, it ripples, even with the walking foot. So my advice would be to go from the center outward when you get up near the tip it doesn't do it as much so that would be my tip and hint okay here we go
All right, so now it's all quilted. Looks like a leaf, doesn't it? Isn't that cool? The other thing I meant to say is don't worry if these don't line up like the little V's. Actually, they shouldn't. This one pretty much lines up, but they look much better when they don't, I think. But that's just me. I'm the same one who didn't want this thing curved like that, so I don't know. All right, now you're going to need a pen. Make sure you line up the point and the point so that your line is going straight down the middle. And it doesn't matter what you make this with, it's not going to show. You can use any pen you want to. I'm just using a bold point ink pen that I have. And before I go any further, I'm going to go back over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew just inside that line I just made all the way around there. Okay? I'm going to go just inside. I'm going to go just as close to it on this side as I can. And I'll be right back. Okay, I've sewn just inside that line. And you guessed it, we're going to start cutting out. And I'm going to cut right on that black line that I made around my pot holder. And if you cut your stitch line that you just made, it's not a bad thing. It happens. I did it on my first. All it's doing is helping hold everything together at the edges. So you don't have to worry about it if you cut through your stitch line. I can't believe I haven't yet. I'm sure I will before I'm done. <laughs> um, I did on the first one, so why wouldn't I on this one? Oh, maybe I'm just going to show off, right? No, really, I usually do sew through or cut through it. I didn't. Yay. Okay, so here we have one leaf already for the next part. Now remember how I said you needed some one and three quarter inch bias binding. Well, now is the time we're going to use it. All right. So the first thing you want to do is fold down your edge and you can press that if you want or you can just finger press it. Flip this so you have your back showing, put your front down, back showing, and then your bias binding is going to be wrong side facing, okay? So you're putting good side down to wrong side of your pot holder. Now, don't go right, like, don't go and do this. Don't go right up to the edge. Bring it down just a little bit. See, just a little bit. About an eighth of an inch. Just don't want to go right up to the edge with that. I'm going to pin that in place. Now, I'm not going to pin around this because... I'm going to move it as I take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to keep it right around there. But I am going to take you to the sewing machine with me. Even though it will be on a faster speed, I think that uh, some of you may want to see what I'm doing. So I will definitely take you with me. We're going to go put this binding on the pot holder because we're almost done.
Okay, we've sewn all the way around. And now this is what it should look like. From the tip, you're going to cut six inches, six and a half, somewhere in there. You want to leave yourself there, about six and a quarter, roughly. Okay. So where you started before is exactly where you're going to start again. Kind of fold this over towards the front. And you guys know I like to iron, but even I don't need to iron this, okay? I do pin it, but I do not iron this. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got. So I'm going to fold this in. I got mine a little further away from the edge than what I had first planned, but it will still work. So you're going to fold it down. You don't have to go all the way down. Just fold it down some and fold it over. As long as it covers your stitch line, you're good. That's all you're trying to do is cover your stitch line. So fold this down and then over and pin. And I really don't need a whole lot of pins on this. Like, not as close as you might think. It really starts, once you start folding it, it kind of seems to know where it needs to go. And it goes there all by itself. It's like magic. <laughs> and of course, when I got down here, oops, I have a string. When I got down here, I don't know if you guys noticed, but that's where the seam was from my bias binding. Of course. I mean, it's not going to hurt it, but could it be in a worse place? Um, righty. And what I do with that corner is I pin here and then I pin on the other side of it. And usually what happens is when I come down along here with the sewing machine, when I stitch, it basically, if I take uh, my stiletto or something and hold it down, I go right around there without having to fold it or, or do anything like that because you're working with bias binding and it is stretchy. So it kind of covers up that corner a little bit. So, okay. Some of it looks wider than others here. I have to get it folded right. <laughs> I've had this um, fabric that I used for the bias binding for years. And I bought it. It has turkeys and pumpkins on it. When I bought it, I, of course, figured I would use it, but I've had it for years and I haven't, but now it's perfect for this. Okay, so now we're left with, this is going to be our hanging loop. So kind of just like our, uh, when we make bags and we make our little straps and things, we're going to fold both edges to the middle. I'm going to take this over and iron it, and I'll be right back to show you. All right, so all I did was fold each edge towards the middle. As you can see, I folded this one down, this one up, and because it has a bias, what I did before I pressed it was I gave it uh, just a little spritz of the sizing spray starch would work as well and then you don't get as much of a stretch and I just gave it a really quick spritz so what you want to make sure of here is that see how your edges should be they should be meeting right there and they should simply go right over that other part and cover it so we're going to move this out of the way and we're going to start sewing okay we'll move that back like that and I'm going to stitch right along that edge i'll take you with me and i'll show you what i do when i get to here so you'll see the whole thing 
Okay, so again, make sure you keep this out of the way. I'm using a 3.0 stitch length. And I am going to sew very close to that edge. And I am going to try really hard not to bump the camera. But it is kind of right in my way. But look what I do for you guys, right? I'll actually take my pin cushion off, though. Alrighty. Here we go. nice and easy around the edges you probably saw I had one little boo-boo that's all right and sometimes I leave the pin in and skate along the edge there Should have had my stiletto out because it's very helpful times like these I'm throwing pins everywhere you guys probably hear them hitting the floor and in case I didn't tell you I'm using a 3.0 stitch length on this there's a lot of layers but I want my stitches to somewhat show so that they look nice. I'm gonna cut this top thread before I get to it. Now, when you get close to this corner, goodness, I'm throwing everything around. When you get close, I want you to make sure that all your your uh, threads are clipped everything's out of the way so that when you get up here it's clear sailing okay but i'm going to stop when i get up there make sure it's folded over like you know so there's no gap right there Okay, and I leave my needle down. Now I'm going to make sure that my edges are even. And again, because it's on the bias, sometimes that can be a little tricky. And I'm going to back stitch here where it's really thick. Give it a couple of back stitches. I never like my walking foot always gets caught up when I come down from a higher like a higher elevation down to a lower it always gets stuck there's like a little piece of plastic under there okay we'll take this back over to the table Okay, let's see what we have here. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right, so I think we left about six inches here. 
closer to seven. Anyway, that won't matter. See how this is coming off in this direction? You're going to grab onto it and turn it so you have a nice hanging loop. Left my pins over here. Uh, now is where you need to decide how long you want that loop, how big you want it. I just judge my first one, and then when I make the second one to this pair, I just match it up to that. And you can use a clip around the corner here, or you know me, I'm going to use a pin. And I have a longer piece in the back than what I need, so I can pin that. Okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch get my stiletto here. I'm going to stitch right here where I've already sewn. I'm going to stitch back and forth. I'm going to go here, right around in this area, to attach that. Okay? So I'm going to go to the machine and do that, and then I'll come show you what it looks like. Look at this. We're almost done. Okay. So I'm going to show you what I did. Now, first thing is, I realize how thick this is to sew through, but I don't have an industrial machine. Mine is just a home machine, and it did it, but I went slow. So if your machine can't, can't do it, just try really slow. So what I did is I stayed right on my stitch line. See how I have this going right along here? I stayed right on my stitch line, and I went forward and back, forward, back, and forward, and then I went here. So it's basically a V. When I got up to this edge right here, I stopped. All right, so now I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail there so that I can put some fray check on there. You could stitch it down again if you want, totally up to you, but there, is your finished pot holder and isn't that beautiful I love these pot holders I think they're gorgeous this is the one that's going next that I'll be making next working on I'm going to sew all afternoon because I love these so basically what I do is when I make the second one I just see how these come out the same before I pin the second one, I just put them just like this, and I just figure out, you know, how far that hangs. But they make a great gift uh, for neighbors, friends, family, whoever. And, of course, you don't have to do them in autumn colors, but because it's autumn and I love it, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. So I think they make a great, great um, set of pot holders. I really like them. And I'm glad that you stuck around to watch me make these today. And because we we used a leaf pattern, that's going to be the creative word of the day is going to be leaf. And I know we've used that before, but that doesn't matter. It's just our game, right? <laughs> so I want to thank you for hanging out with me here at Marie Scrappy Creations today. And until next time, stay safe, dig into that scrap pile. Now you've got something to make with all your autumn scraps, but dig into your scrap pile and be kind out there. The world needs more of that. We all do. You take care and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.